Hello and welcome to the 2022 R-League season launch program. I'm Ross and there's lots to look forward to and lots of guests to introduce you to too. We'll be here with Simon Johnson, the chair of the RFL, to chat through a really big season ahead for Rugby League and he'll be joined by head of media at Betfred, Mark Pearson. And we'll be looking ahead to the championship season which kicks off this weekend and of course as the first Monday night live game on Premier Sports between York City Knights and Featherstone Rovers. Jodie Cunningham will be joining us to chat through the Women's Super League and the Betfred Challenge Cup and she'll be joined by new Premier Sports presenter Emma Louise Jones too who'll be covering the championship for us. And beyond that we'll be looking forward to League One as well with two newbies in the competition with the Midlands Hurricanes and Cornwall joining join the mix. And then in addition to that Rob Hicks will be here to chat through some of the new rule changes for 2022. He's taken on a new role at the RFL as Director of Operations and Legal and will be welcoming scrums back in 2022 which I think everyone's really looking forward to. And then of course we're all gearing up for the Rugby League World Cup at the end of the season and that all kicks off at St James's Park in October and then culminates in a finals weekend with the men's, women's and wheelchair finals all kicking off in Manchester. So it's going to be a big year for Rugby League and joining us now is Simon Johnson. Simon, you took up this post sort of two and a half years ago before coronavirus even existed and yet here we are now gearing up for arguably the biggest year of Rugby League, certainly in my lifetime what are your hopes for the 2022 season well Ross you're absolutely right I think this is the biggest and most exciting year that the rugby league has had we've come through the difficult challenges of of covid economic challenges out in out in the general economy but if you look at what's coming up this year you've got more opportunities to watch more rugby league in more places than ever before with new broadcasters coming in including premier sports who will be covering the championship with us, the sportsmen that will be covering uh, League One and the Challenge Cup to add to our existing partners, Sky Sports and Channel 4 coming in to do Super League uh, and the BBC who will be showing uh, the Challenge Cup along with the sportsmen and, and of course the Our League app. You've got all of that puts, puts Rugby League I think very firmly in the shop window and in the spotlight. And as we build through the season we've got some of our biggest events taking place at some great new stadiums. The um, Summer Bash will be at Headingley, uh, the Challenge Cup semi-finals will be at Elland Road, the Betfred Challenge Cup final will be at the new Tottenham Stadium. And as you said, we then build up towards the Rugby League World Cup in, uh, in, in, in October and November. There's so much to look forward to. And I think if you're a rugby league fan, or even if you're not, you've got more places you can find it than ever before. And I'm really looking forward to more and more people finding our sport and really experiencing the, 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 the skill, the speed, the athleticism and the sheer inclusiveness of our great sport. Yeah, I completely agree. You know, I've been a fan a long time, but it, it feels like a really exciting time to be a part of Rugby League. And for you, Mark, you know, Betfred have extended the partnership across so many different levels of the game now. How proud are you of that? Uh, well, I'm a rugby league fan, but uh, you know, very, very proud. Uh, sponsorship is more than just writing a check. We want to get involved. I mean, me and Simon had a good chat before we actually uh, did this show, uh, and we're very, very proud to have extended and especially included the women's game and the wheelchair as well. And as we've all said, it's a huge year with the World Cup coming. And you know, credit to Simon and the team because obviously there were some uh, dark moments last year because of uh, COVID. Uh, we're coming out of it. We're coming out of it strong, and we're looking at, looking forward. It's a very, very big year. And as a rugby league fan then, personally, what does it mean to you, for your sponsors, to be involved in, in our great sport? Um, look, we're a proud British, we're a proud northern company as well. And look, our head office is in near Warrington, real rugby league heartland. Look, it's a perfect fit and we get on very well. Uh, we had lots and lots of meetings uh, during lockdown, etc. We stuck by rugby league. We've extended, and we've extended for at least two more years as well. I'd like to stress, Fred said, tell you know, uh, Simon and the board, it's at least two more years. So I'm hoping in whenever it is, in about 18 months' time when we have that chat, it'll be a very quick chat and just go, yeah, well, let's extend. You know, we're very, very proud to support Rugby League and we're proud to support from a Super League to all the different competitions as well. It's going to be a fantastic year and great to have so many broadcasters on board. Uh, we've got Premier Sports this year. We've got a sportsman showing at, at least 20 games as well. 12 games on Channel 4 as well. Uh, terrestrial TV can make a massive difference, but let's not forget as well the great job that Sky Sports have done for a number of years. The Sky Sports coverage is superb. 
Yeah, absolutely. And Simon, you know, there's a lot of talk about the, the Men's Super League and how that will benefit from the World Cup. But leagues like the Championship and League One, how do they benefit from such a big year and having a World Cup on home soil? Well, the World Cup, I think, is a focus for everybody because, as you rightly said, it, it, we're, we're playing four tournaments all under the same umbrella. So the eyes of the world will be on England and on Rugby League. And as we build towards that, I think more and more people are going to be finding our sport and watching the, the great entertainment that there is. And I think the thing about Championship and League One, particularly with Premier Sports now coming in to show a live match every week on a Monday night, with the sportsmen covering so much more uh, action that there's been before, I think people will see what I've known for a long time. The Championship in particular is a wide open competition. I think there are any one of a number of teams that could exp have a reasonable expectation of wanting to be promoted this year. As you said in your introduction, we've got two new teams joining League One to add to some really well-known heritage names who have been around Rugby League for a long, long time. And I think you saw, if you followed our game through last season, the action, the excitement, the, the fact that the result is in doubt right the way through the game. I think there's a lot to be said for the excitement that, that the Championship and League One can, can generate. And I think for the, for the Championship for the clubs to see that the prize at the end of that is promotion to the Super League and for everybody to be able to build towards the World Cup and to show the best of our sport so that the Rugby League World Cup in England is as successful as we know it can be. And I know you were a little outspoken about Australia not making it over in 2021. How confident are you that they're going to be here for the 2022 tournament? Oh, we're fully confident. The tournament is going ahead. We're going to be starting with the opening match, England against Samoa at uh, St James's Park in, in Newcastle. And I expect everybody to be there. And I think you'll see, as this season goes along on, on in each of the hemispheres where rugby league is played, you'll be able to see that excitement building. Who's going to be in the teams? How are the teams performing? And I think it will provide a narrative to guide us through the great action that there's going to be at every level. And I think it's, it's worth also emphasising, as, as Mark has done, the fact that we're also going to be uh, hosting the women's and wheelchair competitions. And with the help of the sportsmen, with the help of Betfred, with the help of our broadcast partners, there's going to be so much more exposure of the women's game, the wheelchair game, throughout this year. As I said earlier, more people will be able to find rugby league than ever before, and I think they're going to really enjoy what they see. Well, the championship kicks off this weekend, but before all that, let's take a look back at a memorable season last year. So Martin Ridyard will get us underway for Swinton and he kicks us off. Your Betfred Championship season is underway here at Balfour. One, two, three, four. Oh, they're into the corner with Jack Johnson. Oh. Out to Langtree, short ball for Heaton. Heaton split the defence. Is it the moment for Danny Brough? It goes to Jordan Lilly. Jordan Lilly in front of the post. To be legendary. Oh, the Kuma tie goes in. Thorne oh, going right, he's flung the ball out, he's bounced off the toe end. It could be a oh, sensational yeah. score. Jump goes back to Dean. Dean oh. right footed, charged down, and the break comes oh, wow. in for Featherston, and they're racing away here. Picks it's through, catch it. Featherston are going to win it. He's in front of the post, Jordan Lilly puts the drop goal between the posts. Oh. And it might be a score for the wingman, Morto. Oh. He is in. Jump for a dummy half steals one. Dave Manning! Oh, he couldn't finish it, but Walshaw can! Barely a level! Has he got a pace? He's going for the line, turns it back to Quasi, who bounces over the line! Footage right! Strength, Alex!
Tommy Fatson in the corner! It's a try! It's a try! Far too quick, far too good. Off he goes. He's got loads of options inside. He hacks forward. Marion and Corella were there. Marion wins the chase. Marion scores. Anton brings to an end a season of utter dominance from Toulouse Olympique in this breakthrough year for French Rugby League. Toulouse Olympique are the league leader shield winners. Well, what a year it was for Toulouse in the Championship last season and good luck to them in the Super League this year. But, you know, it is a big year for the Championship in 2022 and I keep banging on about it, but that Premier coverage on Monday nights, it's going to be something special. And with me now is two key figures from the Premier coverage. I've got Jodie Cunningham and Emma Louise Jones joining me now. Uh, welcome and thanks for joining us. Jodie, it is a big year for the Championship. How excited are you to be involved in this league? Really excited and I think, you know, Premier's coverage is going to be huge, especially having that set Monday night slot where Championship is the front and centre of the Rugby League landscape. I think it's going to be a game changer for Championship Rugby League. Absolutely. But we can't forget it's a big year for the women's game as well. You know, we've got that double header final of the World Cup at Old Trafford. How much are you looking forward to that? Yeah, I mean, it's a pinch me moment, I think, with everything that's coming up for Women's Rugby League. I never really thought I'd ever see it get to this point, especially not in my playing career. So to have the opportunity to hopefully get there with England for that double header final in the World Cup and obviously at Ellen Road as well as a new venue for the women uh, in the Challenge Cup final, I think it'll just be amazing. So hopefully, fingers crossed, we can get there as Saints again. No, absolutely. Fingers crossed. But I mean, you say, you know, you never thought it might happen in your lifetime. So you must be really proud of how far the women's game has come, really. 100%. It's, it's brilliant to see. And, you know, I got involved in the sport when I was at school and played my first open age rugby at 16. So I've been part of this game for a long time. And to see the progress that it's made really is impressive. And especially over the last sort of three to four years since the introduction of the Women's Super League, we've just seen it go from strength to strength. And this year, I think, is going to be another game changer. More eyes on women's rugby league across the board domestically and then also in that World Cup. I think, you know, you, this year is exciting, but 2023, 2024, it's only going to improve and improve. Well, the crowds are flooding in. I mean, it was a record attendance at Headingley for that uh, final, wasn't it? And you were a part of that. What was that like? Yeah, I mean, I have been quoted best day of my life and I stand by it. You know, I see the clips from that day and everything about it was so magical. Obviously, Saints lifting the trophy was the perfect end to it for me but not just that the fact that like you say it was a a record crowd just to see that many people there to watch women's rugby league seeing so many young girls in the crowd with shirts and female names on the back that was something so new to our sport and something which hopefully we can build on maintain those fans coming into the 2022 season and, and beyond yeah absolutely and emma you know going back to the championship you're going to be part of the premier coverage uh, all brand new on monday night the first game york versus featherstone what are your hopes for that coverage on premier sports i think just echoing what jody said there it's exposure it's getting eyes on the sport and i think this is an exciting year and i'm excited to feel a part of that um and i think in terms of getting eyes on it it's giving fans that, that platform that they can watch their sport, but also new eyes and letting new eyes in and new people into the sport and seeing what the championship has to offer. And you're not doing things by halves though. I mean, 12 of the first 12 games, sorry, uh, you're going to 12 of the 14 grounds for the championship. So you've got a lot to be getting stuck into. And on top of that, we've got Betfred Challenge Cup coverage on Premier 2 and then the Summer Bash, Summer. which has been announced at Headingley. You know, how much are you looking forward to those opportunities as well? I'm going to be a busy girl, aren't I? But I can't <laughs> wait because do you know what? There is no feeling quite like being on the ground and feeling a part of it. Um, seeing fans there and watching the game up close, that's the bit I'm most excited for. The atmosphere, I feel like it's going to be electric. I can't wait for it. Yeah, absolutely. And we, we're going to look forward to the Summer Bash, aren't we, in Headingley? Um, it's going to be a big moment and I think we're really excited about that. Is, have you got your eyes on anyone in particular in the Championship, Jodie, this season? I think there's a lot of exciting teams in the championship, some some great signings across the board. I think you can't look past Featherstone. I think they've got a lot of quality try scorers across the board and Brian McDermott coming in as, as head coach is obviously going to be a bit of a game changer for them. But lots of exciting teams, you know, I'm I'm interested to see how York get on. I think 
as a club, they're doing a lot of things right. Um, you know, Bradford again, a, a bit of a soft spot. I know Emma, Emma's a Bradford mm. girl as well, so you've got a soft spot there for Bradford. I think there's a lot of teams that are going to put the stamp on it, seeing Cumbria have three teams in that competition is going to bring a lot of fire and passion, I'm sure. Well, speaking of the Summer Bash, I think let's have a look at some of those fixtures that are, are going to be played over in Headingley. So we've got some big ties there, haven't we? In Bradford and Halifax there, as you say, that's going to be a big game. And London versus Sheffield, any particular fixtures that you're looking forward to there, Emma? Um, to be honest with you, all of them, I'm excited to be a part of that. And what I love about this is um, you get, you know, the local rivalries that we all know about. It's that kind of, that's what adds to it on a weekend like this. Looking at it all of them to me are exciting i'm excited to see all of them to be honest yeah and is there any particular team that stands out for you in the championship this year um i don't want to sound like i'm just repeating what jody says but obviously bucky's favorites are featherston so i feel like it's going to be a privilege for me that the the game that i'm opening on is that game at featherston against york heading over to the lner i'm really excited to that for that and i'm excited just to see as well um fans and crowds and how you know they're going to get the opportunity after a rough few years really to go and watch their teams play and really feel part of it again. Yeah, totally. And that first game is York versus Featherstone, Jody. I mean, you'll know, York have done so much actually for the, for the men's and women's game. It's quite impressive what they're doing over there, isn't it? Yeah, it's brilliant. I mean, York and Featherstone, both two really strong uh, women's clubs, as, as well as obviously doing fantastic in the men's competition. And I think that game's going to be exciting. I have got a little bit of a soft spot for York, despite them mm -hmm. being rivals in the women's competition. I do appreciate everything that they're doing for the women's game and I think as a club they're going from strength to strength. Last year, you know, a top 10 finish, they got to the 1895 Cup Final, they got Club of the Year for all the work they're doing you know, across all the teams that they've got, including the Learning Disability, Physical Disability Rugby League that, that they do a lot of work in as well. So yeah, I think it's brilliant what they're doing and York, I think, is a perfect opportunity to grow Rugby League in a, in a city, which is really great to go and visit, but also doesn't have that strong foothold of a big football team as well. I think it's a, a great opportunity for us to grow, really. And looking ahead to that coverage on the Monday night, you know, it's going to be at seven at seven forty-five at York. It's going to be a big moment, do you think, for the championship? I do. Yeah. Hopefully, we'll get a lot of eyes on that. Like Emma said, all the ties are really exciting. But I think that first one, York Featherstone replay of that eighteen ninety-five cup final, will be a really great one to kickstart. Get lots of eyes on it, really cement that Monday night as the time to get watching Championship Rugby League. And you know, you mentioned sort of Featherstone. You, we, did you used to live in Featherstone or you grew up near Featherstone or something like that? Have you got a bit of a soft spot for them? No, I haven't. I just, I just, <laughs> I know, know I just I'm going to be honest, I just know how good they are. You know, there's, there's a lot of quality. Um, so that's why I'm so excited. And for me, look, from a personal point of view, I'm excited because it's the first fixture for me and it's my chance to get on the ground and see it live and feel a part of it. And I think that's, you know, that's the most exciting bit. But just touching on what Jodie said as well it feels like a really inclusive year this for rugby it's brilliant there is so much going on and what a time for us all to be a part of it isn't it absolutely and i tell you what there's no better family than the rugby league family is there so welcome to the fold <laughs> um, but i tell you what we can look forward to that first game between york versus featherstone here's a quick preview looking forward to getting out of here like if you look around it's, it's a great stadium and we're, we're, we're lucky to have it um pre-season's been going really well We've been training well, really well. We, we've worked on a few things from last year and obviously added to a, to a good squad, so looking forward to it. Obviously, last year was difficult with obviously with COVID and, and, and the year before, but this year everybody's got a, a, a clear focus of, of, of where they're going and um, we've organised and prepared very well, so looking forward to it. Yeah. The Championship, it's, 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 a, it's a great league as it is and all the clubs have, have recruited well, but yeah, we've, we've recruited well as well. Some, some good names in there and the, the new lads have the, Pretty much all of them have got the debuts out of the way now in the friendlies, so they're, they're all raring to go. As I say, the Championship's a, it's a fantastic league and, and it's very competitive. Um, I think any team can, can be up there, any team can be anybody on the day, but yeah, obviously the usual suspects are Lees and, and Featherstones, but uh, looking forward to seeing what the Cumbrian teams can do as well. I think more or less everybody in, in the leagues uh, you know, bought well. Uh, added added to a strong squad so it was so it's it's only exciting for the league. Obviously we've got some some new faces, a couple of backs, a couple of forwards. Uh, you know obviously uh, Joey 
Leah when he when he turns up. It's a bit too close for him, I think, at the yeah. minute. So he's, he's on his way. But uh, and obviously uh, Jesse from Cass is um, you know he's loving it at the minute. So it's, it's exciting for us. The 2021 AB Sundex 1895 Cup winners are Rovers. It was awesome, obviously, for the players and, and for the fans. You know, it was a great day out for them. Uh, so hopefully we can, we can do it again. You know, brand new stadium at Tottenham, so that will be nice uh, for a day out. But um, you know, we've, we've got to earn it. Uh, again, another team that that signed really strong uh, for this year. So uh, you know, the, the rad games you know, matter a lot. So you know, everyone's starting on on a level playing field uh, game one. So uh, we're looking forward to it. It's nice that we're getting put on put on telly. Uh, you know, Monday nights, it's something different, so we're looking forward to it. Well, there we go, the 1895 Cup finalists kicking off the Premier Sports coverage for us next Monday night. But that's not all to look forward to in the Championship this season. We've got two Cumbrian sides joining the mix to take it to a total of three Cumbrian teams in the Championship. And joining us now is Rob Hicks, new Director of Operations and Legal at the RFL. Rob, what sort of impact do you think Workington and Barrow are going to have in the Championship this season? I think they're both going to have really good, strong seasons. The Championship is always a really competitive division and there's always surprise results. Um, trips to Cumbria are never easy for any team. It's a real hotbed of rugby league up there. So uh, I think there'll be some uh, big boys who will be, be worried for going up there, really. I wanted to pick up on that, actually, because you must have officiated up in Cumbria quite a bit in your career. What's the atmosphere like up there? Because I think people do forget, you know, that there's a lot of rugby league going, up in, going off in Cumbria. Yeah, rugby league's, I think, massive up there. It, it's such a hotbed and there's a lot of, lot of passion for the sport. And uh, the atmosphere in those three grounds, it, it's outstanding. I, I know that Barrow last year had some huge crowds had some real good games up there and I think when they when they get the, the likes of Lee, Featherstone, Bradford with the big big away following as well, I, I think there'll be some real cracking rugby league up there. Yeah, and Barrow actually, they won League One Club of the Year last season, so they've got a lot going on and they've just signed Jared Sammer up there. So it's going to be an exciting time, I think. What, what do you make of Barrow this season, Jodie? Yeah, completely agree. I think passion is something that you will always get from Cumbrian teams. When I was a young girl playing, Cumbrian teams were always fantastically skillful but also really passionate so I'm excited to see the derbies between them and Barrow I think will 100% be coming into this with a lot of fight. Jared Sammet I think is a quality signing, he's going to lead them around the field really well so it'll be interesting to see how they go this season. And you know we're talking about York and Featherstone kicking off uh, the Premier Sports coverage but the actual first game of the Championship this season sees Workington versus Newcastle, that's going to be a tasty affair surely. Yeah, 100%. I think, you know, Workington, another new side into the championship, but actually pre-season, they, they've done quite well. You know, they managed to get a last-minute victory over, over Whitehaven in pre-season friendly. So clearly going well, clearly ready for the season. Newcastle struggled a little bit against Wigan, but I think Newcastle's a really exciting team. There's a lot going on in Newcastle this year in regards to rugby league. You know, we've got the, the opener of the World Cup. We've got Magic Weekend back in, in Newcastle. So for me, I think Newcastle, again, is an area that's going from strength to strength and that game is going to be one to watch. Yeah, Newcastle is. I'm really excited about Newcastle, actually, just as a club in general, because I think it's nice to see some of the expansion clubs doing well at the moment. What do you make of them, Rob? I think they've really changed the dial of what rugby league is about. I think they've really grasped hold of, of the excitement around Magic Weekend up there. The community game is a real success story. It's gone from being embryonic to now being a really strong, competitive community league. The club buy into that and, and therefore they're bringing people through. There's a pathway from all the way from under sevens through their academy into their first team. They are almost the blueprint of how you can develop a club within the sport and hopefully they're going to have a really strong season. They'll, they'll have it tough. Everybody in that division will. I think if you don't come with your A game in the championship, there's like every chance you're going to get beaten and that's even for Lee, Featherstone, who'll, who'll probably start the season as favourites. But if you, if you go to Newcastle and you're just undercooked, I think they'll, they'll spring some surprises up at Kingston Park. And just going back to the Cumbrian teams, you know, in, in their first round, we've got Lee versus Whitehaven and then Barrow versus Sheffield. Do you really think this year that the Cumbrian clubs can be a match to some of the other teams in the championship, Jody? Yeah, 100%. You know, like Rob said, it's a really competitive league and it's not an easy place to go. So at the end of the day, all of these clubs have got to come and turn up ready to play. And I think they'll have a lot to prove. It's not just the fact of the teams that they're facing. 
having the three Cumbrian sides in that league means they're also going to have one eye on the other teams, seeing where they are. You want the bragging rights and I think it's brilliant for the sport that we have all three there. I'm, I'm hoping that they do well. I'm going to be rooting for them and I'm sure Lee and Sheffield will need to turn up with their A game. And Whitehaven, Rob, I mean, they had a great season actually in the Championship last year. They made the playoffs, but it was a bit of a surprise. Do you think they could surprise everyone again this season? There'll be more expectation uh, and there'll be more pressure because all of a sudden there's the three teams up there and I think Jody's point is absolutely right. It's local bragging rights are going to be massive and those Whitehaven Workington derbies are huge events, huge events. So uh, can, they, can they surprise people? I, I don't think it would be a surprise. They made the playoffs last year, so there's a little bit of expectation on them. Uh, I think they'll go very well, uh, but I wouldn't, like to, I wouldn't like to predict this league this year. I think you're going to have to be a brave person to be putting your money anywhere there. No, I think you're absolutely right. Well, I'll tell you what, let's have a preview of those Cumbrian clashes coming up this weekend in round one of the championship. Feeling really good. Um, there's a good feel around the camp. Everyone's feeling fit, raring to go. Um, so yeah, it's positive at the moment. We've got a few new boys in there, a few young lads as well who have all got a point to prove. I think um, training's competitive. Like there's competition for spots, and everyone's just fighting for the shirt really and wanting to show what they've got. Yeah, I, I don't think there'll be any easy games. Um, there's a lot more games as well than what we had last year. Um, but having said that, like I said, everyone's got a point to prove and um, we're not really going to lay down and die. We're going to fight till the end and um, try our best in every game. Yeah, it's been really good. Um, we're a pretty relatively new side, um, so a lot of it to start with to getting knowing each other and things like that. I'm one of the new signings, um, but everyone's gelled really well. Um, quite a few of us live together and things like that, so that's been a good... Um, start getting those people away from rugby as well um, but the sides really bonded well together and um, obviously we've started as pre-season games now and you know it's nice to actually start getting into some pre-season and some competitive games. Yeah there's a, a real good buzz around the team um, obviously like I said you know there's quite a lot of new players we've gone to um, a full-time system now as well so I, f I think this year you know we will be pushing towards the top end of the league. Yeah, definitely. I think there's um, some great players what have been brought into teams and things like that. So, you know, we are expecting a real competitive um, season this year. Um, I know last year we were a bit sort of breakaway with um, Toulouse and Featherstone, but um, this year I'm pretty sure there's a lot of other sides what are, are, are going to be pushing towards those spots as well. Yeah, changing clubs. It was uh, just from coming from Swinton, it was a big step up. Defo somewhere I wanted to be because it's my hometown so this is somewhere I think I'm the happiest I've ever been so far but yeah it's, I'm really excited to be here. Yeah everyone's settled in straight away uh, obviously we're not the biggest squad everyone knows that but I think that's actually helped us settle in a bit better um, helped us bond easier and uh, everyone's looking out for each other and we're really we're ready for the season yeah. Yeah, that pre-season, I think that's that's got us and we're all excited for the new season ahead and uh, I, just, I can't wait to start playing rugby week in, week out again. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, exactly. We just want to build from last year. We, were, we had a lot of confidence at the back end of the season. We played some really relaxed and just good football and hopefully we can do it again this year. Yeah, yeah, but for sure. Um, we always got told by the older boys how good the derbies are. Um, got to experience one yesterday against Workington. Unfortunately, we lost, but... You know, we can't wait for the next couple during the year. Yeah, really excited for it. You know, it's going to be, every week's going to be tough. You know, normally you might get one or two games that might be a bit easier, but this year it's going to be tough from every game and it's going to be challenging. A real, real tough game. Um, I've heard uh, they're a good start. Um, so, yeah, just expecting fireworks really that first round. Everyone wants to start off with a win, so I think we're ready. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Um, they get a big crowd on over there as well, uh, I've heard. I played uh, work there last week, so uh, we got one over on them last week, so they're going to try and come next time, and I think we're going to be ready. It's been, it's been a bit strange, but obviously the last two years. Um, but yeah, feeling good. The boys are uh, all gelling well, and yeah, it's, it's been a good one. Yeah, disappointed last year um, with where we finished and, you know, how, how, how we went about our business and stuff. So I think it's recruited pretty well. We've had um, quite a big turnover in players. So 
similar to it's got a similar to feel to the 2019 season when you know a lot of players went and a lot of players came in. So I don't know. Hopefully, um, yeah, we can we can we can be challenging. Yeah, hundred um, percent. And you rightly said it. Every single year. You're going through that situation. You're thinking, God, you know, it's going to be tougher this year. It's going to be tougher this year. The signings that some of the clubs have made, as you've seen, is is phenomenal. So it's um, it's going to be a really tough tough season. Um, dare I say, you know, the, the the top end clubs will probably be challenging, or could challenge the bottom of Super League clubs as well. So yeah, it's going to be it's going to be difficult, but one we're looking forward to. I think we're all looking forward to that, to be honest. But just picking up on Thackeray's words there, Rob, do you think that the Championship sides can challenge Super League? I think the gap is smaller than it has been for a long time, especially those sides right at the very top. I, I refereed yesterday, uh, Featherstone played Wakefield, uh, and it was a fairly strong Wakefield side. It's pre-season, you can't judge a lot by it, but it was a really competitive game. Lee played at St Helens on Friday night, that was another really competitive game, tight, low scoring affairs. So the top end of this championship has got some real, real quality in it, and players who probably could still be playing in Super League and have chosen to drop into the Championship. Uh, and therefore, yeah, I think we've got a, a real chance of having a few upsets perhaps when the Challenge Cup comes around. And there seems to be a bit more Super League pedigree now, I think, in the Championship. Do you think that there's a bit more interest perhaps in players to actually play in the Championship? Yeah, 100%, especially with the additional coverage. It feels like a really big year for the Championship. And if this is a way of playing regular rugby, getting live on television, showcasing what you can do, then why would you not want to go to a championship club and really put your stamp on a team, which you can do in the championship, whereas you know in a Super League club you might be in and out of a team and struggling. I think there's a lot of players now who are choosing to make sure that they're putting themselves first, going to a club where they can take their own team, lead them around, put their stamp on a team, and I think they'll do really well. It's a real opportunity to put themselves in the shop window. Yeah, absolutely. And Rob, you know, we've been speaking about the Cumbrian sides and Newcastle and all of that, but you know, there are some old school clubs still going strong in the championship. Dewsbury and Bradford this weekend, for example, that's a, a proper West Yorkshire derby. It's going to be a good game, isn't it? Yeah, and two, two really historic clubs. And there's, the championship's full of that, isn't it? It's full of new, exciting areas, historic clubs. Bradford, giant of the game in the not too distant history you know so rebuilding trying to get back into super league lee featherston lee in super league last year featherston just missed out on the million pound game dewsbury batley and batley had a phenomenal season last year they've they've got people who probably could have played in super league with like the halves of tom gilmore that that's a really strong 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 competition this year and then we've not even mentioned halifax have we and they're another team who've recruited well did well last year Sheffield, we talk about what they've got up to. They've recruited differently this year. London, gone to a new venue. I, I think that whatever game you go to this weekend, there'll be, there'll be some, some action and some upsets. Well, there will be. Well, I'll tell you what, let's preview some more games coming up in the Championship this weekend. Yeah, we've got to try and maintain what we did last year, you know, try and get a bit of consistency and uh, you know, we've, we've managed to retain the majority of our squad this year and, and we've, I think we've improved where we needed to improve with the players that we've brought in, so it's just about maintaining that consistency to try and, uh, try and finish in that top six regular. Yeah, well, they've recruited really well of Halifax. You, know, you look at the team on paper and it's, it's a real high-quality team. They've brought some people in from Super League and some top-end championship players as well. So, you know, we're expecting them to be good. They finished third last year, so they had a good squad last year. But they've overhauled that a little bit this year. With, um, you know, bringing some, let's say some, some players in from full-time rugby, so we expect them to be real tough. And, you know, the, the games that we had against Halifax last year, they were all very, very close and, uh, and tough. So we're expecting exactly the same again this year. Yeah, it's good. It's good, you know. Last year, no one really gave us a chance, but uh, we knew what we had in the squad and what we were capable of, which I think we nearly fulfilled as potential. Um, so yeah, everyone's still feeling good. You know, we played Windus yesterday, which were a, a tough game, uh, very fast, but yeah, the, the mood's still good. Yeah, it's going to be tough. And Halifax have signed really well. They've signed you know, a lot of players. Um, well, it time to take time to gel, though, don't it? So. We'll just see how we go, we'll just concentrate on ourselves, we're not really bothered about Halifax at the moment. Yeah, um, our pre-season has been pretty tough, um, to be fair, so I think um, for me one thing, yeah, we are looking forward to playing games and um, just getting the season started again. Um, we obviously had a good 2021, so looking to build on that for 2022. Yeah, no, nah, good. Um, players, I think we've got about 10 new signings or 11 new signings, whatever it is. Um, 
Um, I think every single one has brought something different and something to help us grow and obviously achieve where we want to go this year. Um, but now it's been, been a real good addition for us, to be fair. Yeah, I think for us um, this year is, obviously we felt like we fell short of where, what we could achieve. Um, it's a no-brainer for us this year. We're looking, obviously, to do better um, than the result we did last year. Um, but obviously, can't look too far ahead, just build on what we've got, and hopefully, if fours come playoff time where we want to be. Yeah, really looking forward to it. A uh, new challenge for me, being at Donny for the last three years. So I wanted to challenge myself in Championship, and I'm really looking forward to it. Tough, very physical, big set of lads. Uh, be faster. But, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it and I think I can I can do well. It'll be a big physical set of lads. It's going to be, some, obviously, our ground pitch is going to be boggy, so it's going to be a battle down the middle, but uh, we're looking forward to it and hopefully we can start off with a win. You know, we, yeah, as you say, we did make the playoffs, but uh, we probably let ourselves down towards the back end of last season. Uh, ended up on quite a bit of a losing run towards the playoffs, so... Probably a little bit of burnout from all the training. You know, obviously the, the COVID didn't help. Uh, we still managed to train through that uh, it was a longer pre-season. So you know, there were a bit of a burn away towards the end of that. We've learned from there. We've had a longer off-season this year, so you know we can really make a push for them playoffs and hope to, to do better this year. The mood's good around camp. Uh, real good set of lads, all gelled well together in in uh, in the pre-season. So look forward to things to come for this year. As always, it's, it's always a tough place to go to is Dewsbury. You know, it's a real tight, narrow pitch, so you know it turns into a bit of a forwards battle there. And um, you know, they always they always give us a, a good tough game, so we're expecting that. We've got a big game next week against Leeds, which will stand us in good stead to hit the ground running in the first game. Uh, yeah, it's definitely been different. Um, obviously, I'm one of the players that made a step up from League One into Championship. Um, so the training and the intensity has been a lot harder than what I'm sort of used to. So, uh, but yeah, I'm enjoying it. It's something different. And it's, it's a good challenge. Yeah, well, well, that's all it was really. I just wanted to test myself in Championship before I sort of lost that opportunity. And um, when London came and gave me it, it just felt right that obviously they've gone from full time to part time and. It could really fit into my uh, my sort of lifestyle as well. I, I, I can't wait. Uh, we've got obviously we've got witness um, first game of the season at home, and uh, it's just a new era for club and you know, down at Wimbledon and everything as well. So it's going to be a special weekend. Uh, my family's going to come down and watch it. Um, I'd say new colours, but it's, 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 it'd be blue and yellow again. So, um, but yeah, I'm in, I'm enjoy. I'm looking forward to it, and hopefully I'll enjoy it. Good. Uh, we've had a long pre-season. I think we started the last week of October, which is you know pretty pretty early in a normal, the, the normal circumstances, so we've had a long, uh, pretty tough pre-season to be fair. Uh, it's gone well, we, we had Danny Craven's testimonial game yesterday against Batley, which uh, we ended up winning, but uh, you know, we, we, we've shown the signs that uh, we wanted to show and all the years that we've been working uh, to improve on, we've shown that yesterday, which is, uh, which is good for us coming up in the season. Yeah, you know, last year obviously a um, bit of a difficult year, everyone was struggling, you know, we had to, uh, with the COVID situation, but then this year we've gone for um, Different tactic, and we've signed young, hungry lads uh, who have played in Championship uh, for quite quite many years now. So we took a different approach, and um, yeah, look, we've got our goals. You know, I think everyone wants to make the playoffs. That's that's the obvious one. So uh, and that's a must for us this year. Yeah, it is. You know, you, you go across the squads, and it's like oh, I didn't realise he signed there, and you know, we're speaking speaking the change rooms, uh, went to do these interviews, and. Uh, other players are mentioning uh, plays they've got from their teams, and it's like, oh, you know, I didn't realise he'd signed there. So every squad's improving, uh, you know, and with what's going to happen in the future with all the rumours about the structural change, you know, we, teams need to start, uh, you know, start improving and, and start putting themselves in the best position when that does occur. Well, it's gearing up for a big year in the Championship and some big recruits there too. I mean, Rob, you've got Deck Patton playing for Bradford and John Keir at the helm. Do you reckon? This finally is the year that the Bulls return to Super League. They'll think that's their chance, won't they? I, there's, just as I keep saying all the time, I think you could make a case for six or seven teams this year and probably then you might even add another two or three in that say they could surprise people. We talked about Whitehaven, no one gave them a chance last year and they were 80 minutes away from being in the million pound game. So uh, Bradford, I've refereed them, they look like they've recruited well. Deck's a great half, he'll lead them around the pitch well. It's going to be a little bit linked to who stays injury free. They'll have every chance. They'll certainly be there or thereabouts. And let's not forget yesterday and their uh, pre-season season friendly, they had over 7,000. I mean, that's a massive crowd for a championship side, isn't it? 
Yeah, and there was over 3,000 at Featherstone. There's real interest in the championship and there's going to be some real big opportunities for players who've been recruited to showcase their talents, get into Super League on merit, and that's what we want. We want a competition that thrives, brings in real good numbers in broadcast and ultimately takes the sport to the next level. Totally. And Jody Halifax, they've, they've made some big recruits as well. You know, they've got Joe Arundel and Kyle Wood from Wakefield playing there. They could have a real impact this year. Yeah, 100%. I think Kyle Wood particularly excites me as, as a ball player. I think he's going to really make a difference in that Halifax side in terms of his leadership, his experience from a Super League level. And obviously then working closely with Joe Arundel, when you know the players around you as a half, it really does help you in terms of guiding people around the field. So definitely recruited really well as per the rest of the, of the league. It, it really does seem very exciting, like everyone means business. And London, you know, they're in a new home again this season, but it feels like something a bit special is going on there, don't you think? And actually, do you think they could really make a stamp in Wimbledon, Rob? I think they've got a great chance to put down some roots, build a supporter base. They'll have a tough season. They've made a lot of changes to their playing personnel. They've got a brand new coach who was an excellent coach in League One. Jermaine will have them fired up. I think it'll be a tough place for teams to go. We talked about travel up to Cumbria. Travel down to London in this league is not going to be easy. Uh, and I think they'll spring a few surprises. And it's the chance now to grow and make that club even better, even stronger, bring some young youngsters through and give it a real go for a few years. If you had a million pound for the million pound game, who would you go for? Um, I'm, I'm not a betting man. I'm not, picking a I'm not picking a team don't in this shy, division. Rob, don't be shy. I think this division's too tough to call at the minute. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, the Championship is an exciting league. We all know that. But so is League One. So let's have a recap on the memorable season in League One last year. Shows and goes the ball, trying to create the space on that right-hand side. Now then, Arvan has got some space and it's a walk-in for Patrick Arvan. get this win get that championship rugby league next year as Carl Force has brought the line now then he's got a little bit of support on his left through Luke Cresswell and it's going to be the first try of the afternoon that's your game that you need to improve Maki Maloudi sure finds a fantastic off to T Ritson down that right hand side and it's going to be number three for T it's yet another hat trick on him either Mark Barrow now got a few options here as Jake Carter done as he goes on his own he's found Declan, uh, Declan Hume. Hume is the try scorer. Walks over to his teammates, lifts a trophy aloft. Banner Raiders, Fred, League One champions for 2021. Well, a really exciting year there for League One. And Rob, it was really tight actually in the top six, wasn't it, by the end? So it was a big year for League One. How much do you think that, that league has changed in recent years? I think the league's got better and better. I, I, you've got now a, a real good blend between historic, well-established clubs and 
clubs that have recently formed in, in non-Heartland areas. And we started to see last year that those clubs had grown. So the Midlands, Hurricanes, what a season they had last year. North Wales made the playoffs, brilliant season for them. They'll be looking to build on that. We then had West Wales, London Scholars had good years. So it's about stepping stones for some of these clubs. Uh, but I think, that, I think League One will be just as tight as the Championship. And some of the recruitment has been really good in those divisions. And I know what Keithley and, and Hunslet have done in the last couple of months, they're expecting big seasons as well. Technically speaking, though, Midlands Hurricanes weren't in League One last season, were they? But it was Coventry Bears, so they've had a bit of a rebrand. But, um, you know, speaking of expansion clubs, Jody, some of those are doing really well, aren't they? I mean, North Wales had a great season in League One last year in the top six. And then Newcastle before that, you know, they're now in the championship. But it is nice to see the expansion teams doing so well, I think. Absolutely. That's what we want to see. That's the whole, that's the whole purpose behind the expansion teams. If we want to grow the game, we need to be able to branch out into new areas to get new fan base and also new play, players into the game, grow our playing pool, playing population will only help us going forward and North Wales did fantastically well and I'm really excited about rugby league in Wales, they're doing great things in the women's game internationally, you know Wales played their first ever international in 2021 and um, we're seeing fantastic things going on there as part of the Women's Super League South, Cardiff Demons actually have a team in the Women's Super League South. So I think across the board, there's some really exciting things happening in some of these emerging areas. Uh, so yeah, really looking forward to seeing how they go on this year. Well, speaking of expansion clubs, you know, the hot topic of conversation in the off season has all been about Cornwall and Ben Hughes caught up with head coach Neil Kelly to see how they're preparing for their first year of rugby league. Well, Neil, a big thank you for joining us. And uh, you've been in charge now for, for just over a month or so. Uh, how, how are things going at Cornwall? Well, given that I've been in charge for about a month, it seems like a year actually, but uh, given that I've been in charge for, uh, for that month, uh, we've come quite a long way, uh, given that I'm still living in Wakefield, I go down to Cornwall in a few days' time permanently, uh, but uh, you know, we've got, a, we've got a, a nucleus of players signed on, we've not got them all signed on yet. But we've got a nucleus, obviously some star names, some not so, so well-known names, but uh, I think we're, we're just about on track. And uh, with regards to, you know, I mean, it's been a whirlwind for you. It's certainly been a whirlwind for the club preparing for this season. So um, how's all that side of it been, the, the logistics of, of establishing the club in the first place and then getting to, to this point? I'm, I'm thinking of the open day trials that the club's had and, and that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's logistically a, a bit of a that's the biggest challenge, to be honest. It's lo- overcoming the logistics. Uh, we're going to be competing in a competition that predominantly is played probably two hundred and fifty, three hundred miles from where we're based. So there's a logistical problem there. We get having the uh, nucleus of players uh, that are going to make up the squad. You know, we've not, we haven't got, say, like Rochdale or Keithley or Hunslet have, where the, that we're based where there's that nucleus of players, where there's that groundswell of players on your doorstep. We're 250 miles away, so uh, we haven't got that. The plan is to create that over a number of years, and uh, we've made it, we've got off to a great start. Well, good to hear some honest comments there from Neil Kelly and, and good to think that they're thinking of the long-term progression of the club too. Jodie, coming to you, what sort of impact do you think Cornwall could genuinely have in League One this year then? I'm very excited about having Cornwall and it's another new area, just like we've been talking about, emerging areas. It's exciting to have them in the competition and I think, you know, they can surprise us. Neil Kelly, really experienced coach there who can do really great things with them. Anthony Mullally, new, new sign-in. For them, obviously, great experience in the Super League. So, really exciting things. And, yeah, excited to see where they can go with that team. And I'm hoping and rooting for them that they do really well. Yeah, and what I like about Neil as well, he seems really excited about it. And there seems to be a passion there. So, you know, I'm genuinely excited about Cornwall as well. And they had some open trials recently, Rob, as well. And I think they were quite successful. How important do you think it is that they do have some homegrown Cornish talent in that squad? I think that's imperative to the whole project. We, I keep talking about building clubs 
And that's what Cornwall are trying to do, build a club in its area, put some roots down. And in order to do that, I think you need local talent coming through, linked to a development pathway where players can play from community game up to the professional ranks. And from all the noise that comes out of Cornwall, that appears to be where they're going. And I think you're right. I think Neil Kelly is a tremendous asset for them because they're going to be recruiting perhaps rugby union players. He'll be able to teach them the nuances of rugby league and they'll be on a, they'll be on a journey through the season. And, and will they start brilliantly? Possibly not. But as the year goes on, I'm sure they'll get competitive. Well, they're not the only new name in the mix this season. The Midlands Hurricanes will be joining them in League One and Ben Hughes caught up with chairman Mike Lomas. Well, Mike, a big thank you for joining us. And uh, here we are on the eve of a brand new season. Uh, how are preparations going? As, as we head in towards 2022. So preparations are quite exciting at the moment with the, the Hurricanes. And I've just been speaking with uh, Rich and Alan uh, to see how, how we're doing in terms of our player development and what's um, what's going on down there. The players are incredibly excited. Obviously, the launch of uh, the Hurricanes this season um, has been quite exciting for the guys to get behind and see the momentum in the Midlands that we're trying to uh, trying to produce. So, yeah, uh, I think we're, we're, we're absolutely buzzing, ready for our first Challenge Cup game next week. And it's, you mentioned uh, Richard and Alan there, and it's, it's important to, you know, state, you know, it's, it's coverage of bears, but it's, it's a, a rebranding thing. And it's, it's an evolutionary step, isn't it? And uh, how, how's that transition been from, from going from the bears to the, to the hurricanes? Yeah, I think it's important to remember that the uh, the Bears still exist. It's a community project which is still uh, very much in the community and very much in uh, doing some fantastic work in uh, in the Midlands area. And um, the launch of uh, the Hurricanes has been received really positively from um, the rugby league community, and I do thank everyone for that because I think it, we want to be in a position where we're, we're we're growing the sport and we're developing the sport in a very very cr- crucial area for the development of the sport. So. Um, yeah, it's, it's, from, from my perspective, it's just continuing to push and get that momentum. But um, thanks for everyone for, uh, for receiving us so well so far. Well, I think it has been pretty well received, actually. And, and it's a great rebrand, I think, Rob. You know, going from Coventry to the Midlands, hopefully, is going to expand the audience. How successful do you think they can be in that and tapping into the whole of the Midlands? Having spoken to Alan and people in the club, I think they're really excited about what's going to happen. It'll be challenging. Everything's challenging and they'll have to put some energy into it. But it's a great area. It's, it's a bigger area. If you, if you try and concentrate on Coventry, you're limiting what, what you can get. By, by rebranding of the Midlands, there's East and West Midlands. There's opportunities to perhaps take games to areas and bring in new supporter bases. And I think what Jody said earlier, this is what we should be trying to achieve in the sport. New supporters, which in turn hopefully brings in new players, new clubs and grows the sport. That's the most important thing. We've got to grow this sport. Yeah, absolutely. And Jodie, they're moving from Coventry to uh, a stadium in Birmingham. If we can tap into Birmingham, I mean, we can take on the world, can't we? Yep, why not? <laughs> <laughs> I think so. I, you know, for me, we do need to tap into some of the big cities. You know, I mentioned earlier about York and how much potential that has with it being a big city. Again, with Birmingham, I think we've got another opportunity there. We saw the rebrand from Harlequins back to London Broncos. Having that real strong city presence, I think, is only going to be a strength. And I think I like the rebrand. It's something I'm behind, and hopefully it all works out. But as Rob said, we need to have that growth underneath. It needs to be sustainable. So the development work in the community is going to be really important. Yeah, totally. And actually, the Midland Hurricanes, they'll face uh, League One side Rochdale this weekend in the Challenge Cup uh, for round two. So I think we can have a look at those fixtures coming up uh, for round two of the Challenge Cup this weekend. So there's some decent ties coming up there and the Rochdale and Midlands will be live on BBC Sport. I mean, that's going to be a tasty game, do we think, Rob? I think the Midlands finished very close to Rochdale last season, so I would expect both sides will fancy the chances of winning that. The Challenge Cup has got some really interesting ties. British Army versus the Royal Navy. Wow, what a tie. What, a, what, a, what an opportunity for the sport to showcase itself. Yeah, absolutely. And there's the West Warriors and the London Chargers as well. So there's a London Derby going on. So it's going to be a big weekend, actually, for the Challenge Cup. Yeah, so some exciting ties coming up in the uh, Betfred Challenge Cup this weekend. But for the last section of the show, we're actually going to move on now and talk about some of the rule changes. And no, no one better to do that than you, Rob, as the Director of Operations and Legal now at the RFL. But first of all, just talk to me about that new role and how that's going to affect how much we'll see you as a ref on the pitch this season. So the role really is to work in the back house of the sport, looking after fixtures, regulations, disciplinary compliance, 
all the areas that keep the sport going, making sure everybody's registered and, and safe, really. So uh, it's a full-time role. I'll still be a part-time referee. It's allowed us to bring in three brand new full-time referees, although one of those is coming back into the squad in Jack Smith, uh, and, and two newer referees, Liam Rush and James Vella. I think that squad is looking really strong. It, it's got some youth, it's got some experience. And so I'll be there to support them doing some games, both on the line and refereeing. But my new full-time role is to try and make sure the sport is as safe and, and, and secure as it can be off the field. Great stuff. And you're actually going to be part of the um, Sinbin show, the regular show that was kind of brought in during the 2020 season to give fans a better insight, actually, into some of the on-field decisions. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Yeah, well, Simbin was a really good chance for, for not only to talk about refereeing decisions, but some of the disciplinary decisions and to explain some of the things that have happened over the last couple of weeks in the sport. It, it, it's meant to be trying to educate fans around things that perhaps they think were wrong, that were right, or, or perhaps to explain why things we got we got wrong. We're not perfect. It's not a perfect model. Sport will never have everything 100% right. And, you know, one of the, the biggest changes coming back in this season is we know scrums are back, which is really exciting. I think a lot of rugby league people are, are excited about that. But Rob, can you tell us a bit more about the decisions of why they were scrapped during the pandemic? Yeah, I think it showed the sport at its best, actually. So one of the issues with, with scrums w was the government rules around isolation of close contacts. And we have some fantastic medical and scientific knowledge within the sport. Ben Jones... Gemma Phillips and our multiple case group, they, they, they did a lot of modelling around what would have happened if a player who was in a scrum had tested positive. And basically what we realised was that at the start of the pandemic, or when we first came back out of lockdown, should I say, if a player had tested positive within 48 hours of a match and had been in a scrum, we would have been isolating so many players that we would have lost games. So by removing scrums, we made sure that the sport was able to come back be strong, deliver a product for the TV. I, I think in some ways, getting rid of scrums, quicken the game up. I, I'm personally, I'm glad they're back. I think it gives an opportunity for attack. But we're now in a much different place, aren't we? We've had strong vaccination across the sport, which we have to say, well done to people who've been involved in that. The players, the coaches, the welfare support, and the staff at the RFL who, who've driven a, an education programme. It's right that people have the right to make a choice on whether they're vaccinated or not, but they needed to have the full information to be able to make those decisions. And we're now in a place where we're coming out the other side of hopefully of the pandemic and we can deliver a product that includes scrums. And for you, Jodie, you know, as a player, the scrums are back. How much of an impact does that have on the game? I think it will do. It's strange that you sort of forget that they were taken away until the discussions then came back up around bringing them back into the game. Personally, I'm you know, usually an outside back, so wasn't necessarily in the scrum, changed to a loose forward. So it could possibly change my game a little bit. Like Rob said, not having the scrums definitely quickened the game mm. up. And as a smaller forward, actually, possibly that was a benefit to me. So it'd be interesting to see how the game now adapts to bringing the scrums back. But I know there's a lot of players who will be very glad of the possible rest that it gives you sometimes <laughs> in a very quick game. <laughs> Well, it does feel like, you know, we're going back to a bit more normality, doesn't it, finally? And does that mean that we're now moving away from a points percentage system, Rob? Yes. So the sport is really keen to get back to normal, like, like we're all keen to get back to normal in life. And, and hopefully, as government restrictions reduce, now we're, we're hopefully on the downturn of the Omicron variant, I, I think you'll see a lot more normality on the sport. And so we will have an expectation on clubs to fulfil fixtures. And if they don't fulfil fixtures, there's a criteria around what would happen. But the expectation is that a team will lose a game 48-0 if they can't fulfil that fixture for whatever reason. So there won't be a points percentage basis next year. I think a lot of fans are going to be quite relieved about that. It's had a bit of backlash on social media, which I don't think was fair, to be honest. But uh, it'd be nice to see uh, the normal point system come back. And what, what are some of the other changes to highlight then for the, for the season ahead? Well, in terms of scrums, we did bring in a couple of new rule changes just after lockdown when we first came back. But scrums then were taken out of the sport. So first of all, scrums can take place in a lateral position and the team who have head and feed will have a choice of whether that's on the 10 metre, 20 metres from touch or halfway. I think that adds variety. I think what it'll do is it'll open up more attacking plays. Putting scrums in the middle of the field will, will have an impact. 
Uh, we also have another situation with scrums where if a team breaks early from a scrum, we move to a full penalty as opposed to what was known as a differential penalty. And again, the team that gets that penalty will have a choice. They can either take the penalty or they can repack the scrum. If they repack the scrum and the other team again break early, that player will go to the sim bin. So there's a bit more jeopardy in that. It'll, it'll change things up. Uh, and then the other change that we've made specifically in terms of on-field change, we'll see the ball steal rule revert back to where we were pre-pandemic, where basically once there's two men in a tackle, if somebody drops off that would and steals the ball, it would still be a penalty. And, and similarly, you can't steal the ball now in the act of scoring a try, that would result in a penalty. Well, there we go, Rob. We are slowly getting back to normal then. Well, that's it. We've officially launched the 2022 Rugby League season and it all kicks off this weekend in the Championship. And don't forget that Monday night live game on Premier Sports, this time next Monday between York City Knights and Featherstone Rovers. Jody, Rob, thanks so much for joining us and we'll see you all very soon.